Have you ever just come across a verse in the Bible that hits you differently than others? I mean, a passage of scripture that really strikes you at the core and leaves you feeling convicted and challenged. One such verse for me is James 4, verse 4. The Bible reads, You adulterous people, do you know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. That's a loaded verse. Friendship with the world is enmity with God. Meaning that if you're friends with this world, you are opposing God. If you get along with the values and morals of this world, then you're hostile towards God. This verse challenged me. So, I began to ask myself, how am I different from the unbelieving world in which I live? How is my mindset different? My perspective, my my priorities. How am I, a born-again Christian, different from the world that I live in? How do I conduct myself? How am I as a child of God different from an unbeliever? in this world. So let's look at it this way. When I'm facing difficulties and going through hardship, how do I react? How should I react? Firstly, the Bible tells us in James 1 verses 2 and 3, count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. The meaning of this verse is that we are at times tested in order for God to produce greater things within us. Now, the worldly view would tell us that if you're going through tough or difficult times, find a coping mechanism, find an outlet, a release. And nine times out of 10, that outlet is some form of ungodly behavior. But the emphasis from the worldly view is on you being in control and finding a means to relieve yourself from the difficulties you're facing. But the godly view is that when you meet trials of various kinds, walk by faith and not by sight. Lean not on your own understanding. The difference here is that you are looking to God instead of some quick fleeting pleasure in this world. Now, how does a Christian react? versus an unbeliever when they are disappointed and discouraged. The Bible tells us in Romans 8 verse 28, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. That means if I've worked hard and done all I can to get that promotion, to get that big break in my career, and it doesn't happen, then I won't sulk or be miserable about it. I can express disappointment as a child of God, but I'm not overcome or overwhelmed by disappointments. And this comes from the faith that all things, that means everything, every yes or no, every open or closed door, all things work together for my good. But the worldly view, the worldly view, is one that would not have as much hope or joy. It's a view that would entice you to complain, to sulk and wallow. The worldly view is a stance that would even encourage you to go head to head with others, all so that you can get what you want. The emphasis once again is on that person being in control. Now, when it comes to the area of searching for a sense of fulfillment, or purpose. The Bible tells us in Galatians 5 verse 13, you my brothers and sisters were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather serve one another humbly in love. Children of God are called to be servants of the kingdom, just as our Lord and Savior Jesus was when he walked the earth and gave his life. The worldly view is that you only have one life to live. Do what's best for you and live your best life. It's a dog-eat-dog world. 
Only the strong will survive. Every man for himself and God for us all. Ever heard those sayings? The emphasis again is on you. But the godly view is to serve. Serve for the glory of Christ. Serve the body of Christ. Be a servant and put away selfish desire. That's where we as Christians should get a sense of fulfillment. The next area is to do with the decision of dedicating your life to a career and building success or truly living for God. Well, the Bible says in Matthew 6, verses 19 and 20, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. You see, the worldly view is that you should work hard, be driven to success, be driven to stardom, make as much money as you can, spend it wisely, save, accumulate. You can do all of that, but the emphasis, once again, is on you. But the godly view is that you should be content with what God has blessed you with. And instead of building wealth and material things here on the earth, store up treasures in heaven. So you see, there's a clear difference between how the world reacts and how the Christian should react. And this applies to all areas even down to your decisions on which words to speak. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 10, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body, according to what he has done, whether good or bad. The message is that I need to live my life, make my decision, choose my words, knowing that one day I will have to account for my actions before Christ. The world, on the other hand, will tell you to speak your mind. You have to be ruthless to get to the top. Do whatever it takes and don't be afraid to offend people. In this context, we're talking about intentionally offending people. Once again, the emphasis is on you. I encourage you to live as the Word of God directs us to. To help myself do this, I regularly hold myself up against the word of the Lord. I hold it up to see if my actions are matching God's requirements for a Christian. This means that if I am to live in the truth of Philippians 3, verse 20, which says, For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Then I'm to have a mindset that is focused on things above on heavenly things, on whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely. That's what I will meditate on. If I am to live in the truth of Matthew 16, verse 26, for what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Then my goal in life my mission in life is not to be successful by any means necessary. It's not to accumulate and acquire as much as I can, but rather it is to live for God. It's to live in obedience to his word so that my soul can be saved. If I'm to live in the truth of Matthew 16, verse 24, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Then my obsession is constantly running after Jesus, seeking after Jesus. More of you, God, and less of me. Your will be done and not mine. For you not to be of this world, then you are living a life that is set on following Christ set on obeying his word and set on serving, serving the kingdom of God. To summarize, 1 John 2 verse 15 says, 
Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Saints, let's examine ourselves and let's be honest with ourselves. Are we any different from the unbelieving world in which we live? Or do we share the same attraction and the same standards? Is your mindset different of the unbeliever in the world? Well, it should be. Your mind should be renewed. It should be transformed. There should be a difference because we're called to come out from among them. Them being this world. Our perspective our priorities. How are we, as born-again Christians, different from the world that we live in? I pray that you'd sit down and evaluate your behavior and your conduct. Do they match up to God's? Let's be true disciples of Christ. Disciples who are totally committed to the kingdom of God, in word and in deed. Let us be disciples who measure ourselves with the word of God to make sure we're never stepping out of line or doing things our own way. Let's be disciples who are doers of the word and not simply hearers.